It's a spotlight on the artist. Learn more about the artist and who they are. Fall in love with the artist, and therefore the work. You know, it'll work wonders for both the commercial side, my side, um, the business side, but also. It gets more people interested, and they're going to come and see that show. They're going to fall in love with the show. They're going to fall in love with the stories behind the show, and they're going to fall in love with the people performing. I don't, you know, that that for me that seems like a, a sort of simple fix, and something that can be done quite quickly and quite easily. really great to talk to you yeah you too you too the last time i think i saw you was at the royal ballet school that would be right yeah wow yeah. yes that's a long time but, ago <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> but a lot has you've been you've been doing a lot since then and um but first tell me i want to know before we talk about ballet nights i want to talk about your a career in ballet and dancing so um where are you from originally well i'm originally from uh up north i was born in a, a, a town called burnley which which is really? uh the greatest football team in the world personally oh, but, okay <laughs> but uh but yeah i'm from a, a town called burnley I, I grew up in the northwest in lancashire um yeah but that's where i'm from originally so uk always <laughs> and uh ballet where did your love for ballet start well, my my mum was a dance teacher, so I didn't really have a choice. I was sort of forced into it. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> no, it's yeah. My mum was a dance teacher, um, so it's always been a part of uh, our family's life. My my sister was uh, an actress. My my other sister is uh, musical theatre. But they we all went through dance training um, okay. as we came through. Yeah. So it's that family uh, background of you know knowing about the arts knowing about dancing so you had that example I did yeah I, I think um it was always I, I, they were always very supportive of it as well I think I've you know I've always been very much in love with with dance um I never really loved performing that much but I've always enjoyed sort of the the atmosphere around it and and you know it's 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 quite a it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I think it's a different vocabulary of, of, of communication. And I think, yeah, if, if it wasn't for my mum, for sure, I would never have gotten into it. I think my, my, my dad was always keen on me doing football instead, but he, uh, oh, okay. as many fathers do, they lose that battle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I also say to my son, I don't mind if you, if anybody asks, how did you get into ballet? You can, you can tell them your mum forced you. I don't <laughs> mind if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, yeah. So I started at two years old. As, as my mum will, wow. she she had a local dance school in the town that we where we were from, and at two years old, I was running around. Uh, that there is somewhere on the internet, although I sh I shan't be pointing anyone in the direction of it. There is a picture of me in a teddy bear suit at two years old singing. Oh, really? um, you know, me and my teddy bear was the the musical theatre oh, number. Okay. <laughs> we did. I was the teddy bear. Um, <laughs> so yeah it's, it's always been there so I've, I've not really known anything else to be to be completely honest it's always I think it was always going to be my 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 life was always yeah. going to be dedicated to this yeah. but now in a small town uh and and you said also about the football and and your dad wanting you to do football but in a small town in England, how much do you think um boys it's acceptable for boys to dance? Well, we never, I, I played on a football team um, and they never knew that I was uh, okay. a dancer. So, so at 11 years old, when I, <clears throat> when we made the choice, I was going to go to vocational dance school. Uh, and we told everyone that I was going, it was sort of a bit of a shock to the football team um, because they were like, really? we never, uh, although there were, there were hints. So there was yeah. one, there was one time we were playing a team. I was a goalkeeper. Um, I still hold the record, I think, for most amount of the matches won by a goalkeeper in a league. Um, under 11s, though, it doesn't yeah. count. <laughs> um, we were playing a game, and I stopped a shot, uh, and, and I stopped it with my hand and landed, and on the ground, and there was someone there to kick it in, so I kicked my front leg out, stopped the ball again. They came back and shot the other way, so I kicked my back leg out. So I sat there in splits on the pitch, and everyone was like, oh. <laughs> they thought I'd like, <laughs> myself apart. Um, but no, so I mean, there was always signs, but 
Yeah, it came in handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much so in that situation. Yeah. Um, no, I, I suppose there was, I, I can't say I ever experienced like severe bullying for it or oh, anything yeah. like that. My mm-hmm. my primary school that I was at, with in the, in the, they knew that I danced, uh, but it was, I, I don't remember ever feeling alienated for it or, or ever being sort of, as far as I can remember, I, I don't see any negative to it. I, obviously, there's always just that question of, you know, what does that mean? Because it's sort of a very alien thing for most yeah. people. It's a ballet. What is that? Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember having any sort of negative mm. feedback from it, or, or nothing at least that's caused me any long term trauma. <laughs> so we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I recently spoke to a dance hmm. teacher who uh, she goes to schools and you know sort of get everybody to dance, and she said the boys are <clears throat> initially a bit hesitant. And then they, when when they get to do it and and get into it, you know, they're so eager and they and then they love it. So yeah. I think it's always that thing of it's a bit unknown, and then sure. you know they don't they're not sure about what it is, and but then they get to it and then they enjoy it. I think whenever anyone mentions, even now, if you say ballet to someone, their immediate mental image is two two point shoes. Uh, the male element of that is sort yeah. Of, far away so for, for young children who grow up and and if that's what's being perpetuated that that imagery that that um you know then then of course it's not going to be the first thing on on male children's minds you know that, that they see more footballers or they see more you know the male dominated areas um as, as someone to look up to um there's not i suppose much access to 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 that it is getting better for sure it's getting better you know the, the the most common one is always Billy Elliot, isn't it? It's always that that Billy Elliot is always the the go to. Uh, yeah. I don't know how many of my school friends when we were at school, everyone in their local town referred to them as the Billy Elliot. You know what I mean? Because that's the only oh, one yeah. who has you know. So so I, I would for most British British born dancers when they were at primary school, I bet that they were referred to as as Billy Elliot at some point. Um, and that's because that's the only one really. There's no one else. And I think part of it would be it is getting better. I, I see a lot of workshops and masterclasses that is like boys in dance and get boys dancing, which is which is great. Um, and it is getting better. But uh, yeah, I think we're still probably a little bit far away from from that first mental image being a male dancer. Yeah, but I recently spoke to uh, the guy who's got a ballet company in Nigeria. And he talks about the same thing where it's, you know, the girls are there, but, and of course, ballet for them is something completely foreign, but still, you know, the parents don't want the boys to dance. So, mm. um, you know, it's, it's all over. It's not just in the Western world. No, exactly. And actually, I, I think it probably stems to something, what the male role is in society. Um, and it sounds a bit sort of a dramatic thing, but I think, um, traditional more traditional countries or, or countries that are sort of have more traditional um family values always still see that the male has to to, to go out and earn the money uh, and to be that sort of figurehead in a family and for a lot of countries that is still very much the 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 way that that works and one thing that isn't associated to ballet or dance is money and wealth you know you, you don't attribute know. you don't attribute that to to dancers so if if you're raising a family and, and with the idea that the the male in the family has to go out and provide for for his family, ballet is probably not the option that they're pushing them towards. They'll be pushing them towards you know sort of more traditionally financially profitable um, things. And and I, I have seen that a lot in in certain. I mean, I, obviously, I lived in Romania um, for for a long a long time, um, and there was only three or four boys in the in the school. I mean, and that's not an exaggeration. I mean, literally three or four boys in the in the leading school in the in the in the country. And I've always I, I can't say I actually have any proof that that is the case, but but from what I've understood and from what I've seen, I think that's a really big component. You know, the the, the financial element to it is sort of off putting for you know you know the same way that families want their kids to go to university and to, and to learn skills that have, you know, that are going to support them through the rest of their life. I think, I think a lot of parents don't push their, their kids towards dance because they know that it's not going to be the safest job um, to go into. I, I've never thought about that, but that, you know, it's true. And, and it's also in South Africa, the arts is seen as, you know, it's not a secure uh, yeah. direction to go into. And I've just recently also 
spoken to school children um, and, and we talked about the same thing, you know, that they believe that the arts or to do drama or to go into the arts is, is not secure. Yeah. So, yeah, it can be that it's the same, the same idea in dancing. But now yeah. you've, you've not just, you haven't just been a dancer, you're also a choreographer. I try to be. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Was that something you've always been interested in? No, I think to be honest, um, it came about in school. Um, I think I think um, when I was at the the Royal Ballet School, that's when when that started taking off for me. And it was only because I, I think for a long period of time I was so unhappy um, dancing that I, I you know I wasn't I wasn't the best. I wasn't good by by some some you know like. In the, in the class, I was always at the bottom of the class, not not the top, um, which will leave you feeling sort of, um, let's say, sort of disassociated with what you're doing. You yeah. feel a little bit, you know, okay, this is obviously not for me because I can see everyone else being so great and I, I can't achieve that. And the truth be told, if I if I <laughs> could go back now and smack myself in the face and say, just try, then, then probably I could have been a lot better than I ended up being. But because of that insecurity, it then led to me having negative behaviors and 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 having negative and those negative behaviors had a negative impact on my progress as a dancer. And then when this thing uh, choreographing came in, I never thought about it before because I would never have had the confidence to to do it. And actually, the very first piece I made um, in school, I tried to quit halfway through um, because I didn't. I was like, no, I got, I got embarrassed, you know, I got insecure about it. I got nervous about it. So I tried to walk away from it and I will always, oh, and I, and I say this every time we have this conversation, Kate Flats, who was the uh, choreography, the head of the horror choreography department at the Royal Ballet School, she wouldn't let me quit. She said, no, you have to finish it. You have to, you have to do it. Um, that, that piece, I get goosebumps now that you say, yeah. Because, yeah, you need somebody like that. I did, I did. And, and I did it. And that piece ended up being toured all over the world by oh, some of the biggest dancers in the world. So amazing. And it is it's, you know, I yeah, I I owe my entire career really to that moment and to Kate, um, who I tell very often, I say, I say thank you. Every time I do something, I try and, and send her a message. Um but but yeah, so so choreography started then um in in that process. I, I sort of realized what I enjoyed about the dance world. Um and from that moment on I set myself a limit. I was like, I'm going to dance till I'm 25. And then after that, I want to commit everything to choreography. And I ended up lasting until I was 22. And then I quit. <laughs> so really? Three years ahead of schedule. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's interesting that you say that you felt you were the bottom of the class because that, uh, you know, it, do you think it's sometimes because of that environment of, uh, you know, the school and, and the everybody in the school trying to be the best you know that that competition sort of then you lose the whole thing where that it's all about that it's about artistic expression or and of course I know it's the training is important and it's about technique and it's about all of that but that uh, somewhere that artistic um, focus is lost yeah, I, th I think it's it's difficult, right? I, I think anyone having to deal with people going through that transition in life, those teenage years, um, I don't remember anyone from my school not having some issue with insecurity, but I, I think that can be said for most teenagers across the world at any point, right? Yeah. You, we go through that. Um, I think the the difference in, in, a, in a school like the Royal Ballet School or, or any sort of professional ballet school is that the intensity of, of, of which you work um, doesn't really allow for that insecurity. It, it, I mean, it only sort of makes that insecurity worse because every day you have to stand in front of people and be judged and and be, you know, and, and that judgment in hindsight probably isn't meant in a negative way. But when you're feeling insecure already and you're sort of getting that negative feedback, um, you know, it, it has an effect. It can't not have an effect. It will always have an effect. Um, and I think there's two ways to look at it really I, I suppose you you either sink or swim in that situation um now can the school be more helpful when people are sinking always you know we can always be more caring and create caring and i think they are doing that to be honest i think most schools are recognizing that that 
the way that it has been done in the past is not the correct way to do it. And they're trying to change that and be more encouraging, more supportive. Um, but for some people also, you know, that that when you leave school and go into a company, that doesn't leave, that doesn't lose. And it's the same for, for any any job. You know, you, it's the real world. You either you go into it, there's going to be high pressure situations. And I think one of the things that the school does is is to try to prepare you and, and be honest with with people if you're not going to be able to hack it, if you're not going to be able to survive in that world, you probably shouldn't go into it. Um, and they can provide all the tools to help you get there, but you know, it's yeah. it's it's not for everyone. That's the, the truth of it. And it wasn't for me. I could I couldn't do it. I, I even if I'd have waited a few years, maybe got more mature and started to enjoy it, I would have missed the majority of the career just being worried. And then it just wasn't for me. So you know, I'm one of the people that sort of in that situation sunk. <laughs> Yeah, but um, it's it's true what you're saying, and it's also um, you know it's it's what it is. You know, it's there for the training, and it's probably the age that you're there that you're more sensitive to comments, and yeah. uh, you know the insecurity doesn't help. And yeah, but it's um, but do you think also people from outside see ballet as something very mysterious you know and and the pressure that the dancers have that they have also a um not the correct uh, image of ballet well they have the image that the ballet world presents right mm -hmm. so they don't actually see what what happens um, they don't see the, the fun side of it because i think every every interview yeah. that a dancer does talks about how difficult it is how you know, we work so hard. It's all—it's all very scripted responses. You'll very—you'll very rarely find sort of someone going really far away from the choreographed narrative that you yeah. know. Or we get taught. You know, we get—we got press training at schools of how to respond to things and how to. And you take that in. So what ends up happening is this—this this bubble of the ballet world. Um, there's no one actually saying what it's like, all the wild partying side of it, all the all the stuff that oh, they. Yeah. <laughs> want to keep hidden they don't want people to know about that side um all the but then on a darker side all, all the sort of the abusive things that have started to come out recently um all that side just sort of gets pushed away and so there's this idea of what ballet is and the ballet world is and then there's what actually happens and you'll find even even now we like in, in the current job that i have you speak to artists that they're, they don't want to say what they don't want to say the truth in public because they're worried that it will affect something down the line it's like this is why people don't really connect with dance is because they don't know the truth about it they, they know this sort of and they can see that it's fake you know they can see this sort of scripted story that we've created about what the ballet world is yeah that's true but you also now involved in a project that i think is amazing and it's ballet nights and here you're bringing ballet really close up to people to the audience yeah, in, in many different ways. Um, so there's the physical aspect. Our, our, the studio theatre in London, Lanterns. Um, I mean, it's very literally. You're up close <laughs> with the dancers. You could you could touch yeah. them if you extend your arm. Um, but but also, it's about bridging the gap. It's making a connection to the audience in different ways. So adding adding a story to it that the audience can understand. And, and we do that in London and in, in the Valley Night way. adding a compare so Jamil who I know you spoke to as well um yeah uh, wonderful wonderful guy uh, artistic director founder of the project um he he hosts the evening and the way that he hosts it is fantastic now I'll, I'll, I'll tell a story I'm not sure if I should or not um but I'll, I'll do it anyway um, it. <laughs> the where where we were there's an office in the back of the where the studio space is there's offices in the back and we work in the offices and there was a rehearsal going on for um for in the in the week leading up to the show and i could hear this music going over and over and it was it's not the easiest music to listen to right it's like a child speaking and, and crying and, and it's like the, every day i was setting up my laptop like oh my god i can sort of turn this off like what is this um so i had this like you know i didn't i didn't know what was happening in there all i heard was this music and all i heard was this you know this thing a week later i go and sit and watch the show and jamil introduces the story of of the of why why this piece was made why this um ballet was being created and it happened to be about a cuban artist um who hasn't seen his daughter in two years and hasn't been able to you know hasn't been able to go back and visit his family um 
And suddenly that music that I'd been hearing for the past week that had been irritating me, that had been, you know, I didn't understand what it was. I watch this piece in tears as I see wow. the dance, you know, come on. And, and that's, that's the gap that we're trying to bridge. That's the part that we're trying to bridge because a lot of people go and watch a ballet performance. They admire the physicality of it, but they don't know what's happening. And if you're having to pay to get a program and even in the program, it doesn't really specify what's happening. Um, you sit there and you get lost. I, it happens to me and I've been in dance since, as I said, two years old. And I often go to watch a show and I have no idea what's going on. So how do, are we expecting audience members who are new to dance or, or trying to get into dance to, to, uh, to understand what's happening? So, so yeah, bridging the connection that way is and bringing ballet closer in that way, but also taking it to places that don't have um, sort of access to dance. So we're my, my role within the company is international development. And one of the key components of what we're trying to do is set up um, ballet nights experiences or ballet experiences. It's not just ballet nights anymore. We have productions coming, full length productions coming. Um, but it's taking dance to the areas of the world and to people who don't have direct access to it and to make it accessible, to build a new audience, to make it, you know, something that people everywhere talk about. That's that's what we mean by by bringing ballet closer. It's not just the physical aspect of sitting closer to the audience. It's it's about taking it to places that are, you know, to make it to make the audience connect to it better. Well, this is amazing. And this is really what I think um, is needed because like you say, sometimes it's that distance between the the audience and the piece. Because even for me, I um I know when when you know my son or my daughter or Suzanne or Hanu, when they when they're involved in a piece and they tell me about it, I and I go and see it, I see it differently than I would have then just because I know the background. And it's true that not many artists and even in musicians, with musicians, you know, I've been to uh, concerts where when I know a little bit when the when the performer or the, the musician talks about the piece, you immediately get this connection and you immediately understand what it's all about. Or even if you make your own picture, it's you, you at least know something about it. And I think it's so needed in ballet. Yeah, and the, and the other sort of prong to that list of how we're bringing it closer is connection to the artists themselves. You know, yeah, you, amazing. You, just, you get to watch a musician, not just because you love their music, but because you, there's a story to them and to that, you know, and you, ballet dancers are incredibly interesting <laughs> when, when we get, when we get to know them and, and when we, when we start talking to them and, and the audience want to know more about the, the artist, they want to know more about the, and, at the minute, it's just not being given to the audience. So, so what we're trying to do is, is also create a spotlight on the artist, which is why you know we have Ballet Night Spotlight that just happened last week uh, on Pet Claws and Night. It's a spotlight on the artist. Learn more about the artist and who they are. Fall in love with the artist, and therefore the work. You know, it'll work wonders for both the commercial side, my side, um, the business side, but also it gets more people interested and they're going to come and see that show. They're going to fall in love with the show. They're going to fall in love with the stories behind the show and they're going to fall in love with the people performing. I don't, you know, that, that for me, that seems like a, a sort of simple fix and with something that can be done quite quickly and quite easily. But this is a, a part of what I'm doing is, is talking to artists, hearing their stories. And the interesting thing is when I go and see them now, because after I've heard their story, it makes me also experience the concert differently and it's exactly what you're saying you 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 know s some artists have told me that oh maybe people won't be interested in in me or or in the in the artist and they shouldn't know the story but i think it's so important to know the story because the artists bring with them something of, of the passion of what they're doing and Ooh. um you know i've i've spoken to pianist who talked about their love for Beethoven and it the way they talk makes you so um eager to go and listen to the piece because of just about how they talk about it so I think it's brilliant that you do that you know that you connect the artists also with the audience we have to I mean it, look there's a very sort of real fear um there's a there's a data statistic I'm a bit of a data nerd, so I apologize. But the, the, the statistic, which is terrifying, um, is that 
in Britain, the, the, the number of the percentage of people who have been to see a dance show has decreased by an almost 50%, from 7% to 4%. Really? That's a terrifying statistic that, that nobody is wanting to go and see a dance, um, a dance show. Now, that's not the same, you know, there's, there's certain bubbles. So obviously the Royal Opera House um, is not part of that um, conversation, but the companies outside of that, the independent companies, the people who are trying to launch new projects, that is a terrifying statistic because there's no sort of clear indication that that's getting better at the minute. Um, and I, I can say that from someone who produces shows in London, um, ticket sales uh, across the board and, and other producers that I talk to, it's it's what people are willing to pay to go and see a dance show is it given the cost of living crisis and given everything that's happening right now it's falling further and further down the list of priorities for for most people um and that statistic how do we address that in a productive way and we think the best way to 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 address that is by creating that connection again to to, to reconnecting people to dance and one of the things that jay uh, sorry jamil i call him jay uh, one of the things that Jay does uh, so so brilliantly is when he's doing these, when he's introducing the artists that are on stage, he tells a story about them. He also says, you know, what the piece is about, why the piece has been made, but also where you can see the piece, where you can next see the piece, where it's going to happen nice. next, hmm. to pass on the information, you know, so, so that we're trying to connect, you know, and this is a really important factor is that we just, we, we want to be a platform that connects audience members to the dance world doesn't matter whether it's our, our shows or any other shows we want to be an introduction to dance we want to be you know we want to promote as much as we can to help get that four percent up again back up to seven percent and hopefully at some point a hundred percent we want everyone in the world to have seen a dance show at least in the last year yeah, yeah. but uh during lockdown i did a series of interviews also with artists from over the world and the conclusion that i really got uh because I always ask the question, why are the arts not valued? And I think we have to also start with children, you know, because I think the more you can, um, or the more you know about the art form, the more you can uh, value it, you yeah. know. And I think this is also, we we have to start thinking why, uh, you know, how to get children into the uh, to experience art, not not to become dancers, but to just have an understanding. And this project that you're doing with with the workshops and yeah. uh, you know the outreach to to areas where people don't necessarily would be able to go to a theater, you know that's great. Yeah, wait, exactly. And and you know you mentioned this about the children. How do we get children involved? Well, a lot of children. Uh, go to dance, especially young, really young ones, go to dance uh, because their parents want them to go. You know, they take that. And, and usually st st what, what we can see is that usually that is uh, children, uh, sorry, female children being taken to dance because they want their daughters to be the pretty ballerina stereotype. So yeah. all, all the things that we're talking about seem are connected in some way. And how do we get the parents to want to send their kids to dance? Um, well, Firstly, the health benefits. I mean, the health benefits, the discipline, exactly. um, you know, the the artistic expression. It, it it will do wonders for, and and this is proven stuff. It's not it's not like you know, theoretical uh, questions. It, it it is genuinely the health benefits, not just physical health, but psychological health. They're huge. They're huge. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole bunch of studies and papers that people can pull from that. So if you know, from that side of it, there's that. The second is is what we spoke about earlier. Um, you know, when it comes to, well, we don't want our kids to to go into this in a full time way um, because, you know, they're not going to have a, a safe career. Well, yes, at the minute, but that is changing day in day. And the amount of opportunities for freelance uh, work and freelance shows and, and everything it is getting better. You know, there's a lot more independent, especially in the UK. I mean, the UK is, is you know, there's so many dance companies, so many dance opportunities. Um so it is getting better. And what, what we hope to do with Ballet Nights and, and our other productions is create more and more dance opportunities. That's one of our big goals um, because we see the amount of um, opportunity to get more people involved in dance. Um, and so we're we're currently sending up productions. Um, I can't say too much about it, but we're doing productions all yeah. over the world uh, in the mm -hmm. next two years, uh, which is really, really exciting stuff. Um, so more dance opportunities are coming. So that that will create a better dance economy. It is getting better, and there is a, there is you know a mission by not just um, you know Jamil and, and I and our team, but um, but from other 
areas of other companies as well. The Royal Opera House is doing some great stuff um, about emerging artists and giving people opportunities and, and international ballet are doing the same. And, and that, so it is getting better. So this fear that, you know, it's not a stable, safe job is hopefully sort of going to pass. Mm. But then it also, it also ties in, you know, so you have slightly older children. You need them to idolize, like to be inspired by the people. Exactly. And that comes back mm. to the conversation about creating that connection with the artist, you know. How many how many young ballerinas? I mean, this. I mean, for for females, and it is a lot of bigger. I mean, I know so many um, people from local schools that I work with who who, if you say Yasmin Magdi, for example, that they just go crazy for you know, like, oh, she's so beautiful it's on Instagram, and like, and they see that on Instagram, and it does get fun, and that it does it works. That's how you get people in there, and we want to sort of do that with more and more artists to give mm -hmm. that. That exposure so that that's how we get more people involved and more children involved is, is by doing everything sort of that we we've been discussing so far um in order to to get people to want to go and to be excited yeah, and i think it's also uh when the artists start talking to children and they start connecting with children it makes it also for them interested to interesting to go to the theater you know because suddenly now there's that person and and that personal connection so um I think I, I wonder sometimes if the dancers are not, they're so focused on what they're doing and they're so, you know, tired and busy and, uh, but that they forget that side of things, you know, that, that yeah, it is important. Hugely to, important. It's hugely mm. important. It's a responsibility. That's the thing. Mm. It's, it's not, it's not. And I think a lot of artists, well, it's not, I think I know a lot of artists um, because, you know, I have this issue on, on not an issue, sorry, but I have this conversation a lot with with artists um about self-promotion like promoting it um doing the promotion yourself to help build that i think it's, it's a responsibility it's not it's not you know i understand everyone has their own brand now that they want to protect they have their own um, thing but you have a responsibility as well as a dancer as a leading dancer as a principal soloist or anyone in the in the companies that the major companies there is a responsibility that you have to help fix this issue that we're having with the sort of the, the dying audience, the, the, you know, the responsibility is, you know, if you share your content, if you post your content, if you advertise the shows, if you, if you get involved, it only benefits you because more people will come. And if there's more people coming, more people paying tickets. And if there's more money in the industry, guess who gets paid more? You know, it's, it's, yeah. a, simple, it's a simple, uh, transition. So, so there is a responsibility from these artists, in my opinion, and dancers and, and think to promote, to inspire the the you know the younger generation and to 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 go and speak. I know it's not always fun, and I know it's, it can be quite embarrassing. I, I mean, I hate it. Um, <laughs> that's why I don't do it. I, I left the industry. Oh. <laughs> for reasons, but, um, but but you know, we we have to come together as an industry and and realize that in order to get younger people, more people involved in dance, you you have a responsibility to to interact with them, to to talk to them, to go out to these and, and do this work that will help um the industry as a whole yeah no that's that's true and i love that and i love that you're doing this and and love this whole uh ballet nights uh concept you know of of not just the performances but the reaching out and going all over the world and and uh, you know sort of giving people this exposure yeah we want to we want to you know it's a big mission but we we have fun with it as well, by the way. It's not all it's not all stress and <laughs> I mean <laughs> most of the time it is stress and, and panic, but we, we do have fun with it as well. And, and that's an, another thing that I think is is really great about uh, the Ballet Nights team. Um is that it's it's the energy in the office when we when we all come together and we're talking about ideas and, and coming together and how we can build this where we're going next. What we and we see the projection of three years and we're like, yeah, let's just go for it. And we, you know, mm -hmm. there's a real energy about it and it's it's really exciting. I'm really, you know, honored to be a part of it. Um and I think, as I said, we're not we're, we're here to to work and collaborate with other people. That's that's our mission. We want as many people to come together and as you know, if we can facilitate that in any way, if we can help, our goal is more dance. That's what we want. More dance everywhere. Um, so if we can help in any way, you know, that's that's what we will do. Mm. This uh, dance teacher I spoke to, uh, Bernice. Um, she goes to schools and she, like I said, she. Uh, does dance classes there but she she also incorporates the syllabus and she said it's amazing how the children then suddenly 
have an interest in the history. She even takes maths classes and uh, the math syllabus and do dances there. So it just shows you all the possibilities there are in dancing and how dancing can be incorporated also in different ways. So, yeah. yeah. I know it can be, and and you know, not everyone has to do it to become a professional, right? No, exactly. that, that's not the point. It's it's you know, yeah. dance it can be done anywhere. That that's the, the joy mm -hmm. of it. Um, ballet, obviously, ballet is a little bit more strict on certain things, but you know, th the truth is, go and enjoy it. Do it because you love it. Exactly, it yeah. is enjoyable, and and the more you enjoy it, the more the audience enjoys it, the more everyone enjoys it. It's a it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I mean, it's a it's to be able to communicate emotions without speech and just showing the physicality of the emotion or the story just through i mean it's, it's stunning um yeah i think i think if, if if people give it a chance and if it's if it's being connected to you in the right way there's no way that you can't love it that's just the, the truth of it yeah no that's true but ross tell me now what what are the wishes for you for the future oh I, I mean, a lot of my focus, all my focus at the minute is on um, is on on, on succeeding, making making uh, the Ballet Nights um, project succeed. Uh, my wish is that you know, ten years from now, our team is one hundred times the size as it is now. We, we've operated where we want to operate. We've done everything that we wanted to achieve, uh, with more things by then that we want to achieve ten years on from that. Um, that that's for for for, for, for Ballet Nights. That's my my goal. Um, I I believe that it will happen. I, I'm I'm sure it will happen. I think we're we're on the right track to to make it happen. Um, and I think yeah, that, that's. I my, believe my... so. Yeah, I believe so too. Definitely. Yeah. And with with choreography, do you still do choreography? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I have a few projects coming up. Uh, I have a difficult relationship with choreography over the past couple of years. Um, I fell out of love with it, and I had to sort of go back and start realizing why I'd fallen out of love with it. And after the reflection, th there was a few projects that I, I was involved with that I just, <laughs> I, I hated. Um, I, I really, after watching, I was watching them and just thinking to myself, what have you done? Like, what, what is this? This is mm -hmm. not you. This is, you know, what is this? Uh, I didn't believe in it. And, and then I, so I decided I would take a break from that. Um, for a year, I moved back to the UK and decided that I was just going to have a little rest from that. Uh, it, then I got this wonderful, wonderful opportunity um, to have a discussion uh, with Ballet de Barcelona um, to create this new uh, production with one of my dearest friends, Kirill Richter, um, who was the, the composer, Kirill Richter, was an absolutely stunning person. And he very generously agreed to let me use the music I wanted to use. Wow. And we created a project and I, and I, that immediately doing that project made me realize what the issue was and why I'd fallen out with other choreography, because working with that company and working in that environment, um, you know, I I was back to loving it. And and I, I think the reason for that is I, it was mine. There was not other voices whispering in my head telling me to do this, do that, do that, do that, do that. It was just me in the studio with the artists and, um, working on it so I have projects lined up um, I don't I think the sort of the criteria for me doing a project now is quite different to what it was three or four years ago where I would just say yes to everything and then just see what happened now there has to be sort of very clear understandings of how that procedure is going to work uh, that it has to has to make sense for me because it's it's a terribly tiring thing. Not not that I'm trying to portray like this <laughs> dark, no, deep but art I... or anything like that, but it, it it does take a lot out of you because you uh, choreographing for me uh, is is communication of uh, emotion. So so whenever I'm doing a new piece, if if I'm having to go to that place where I have to sort of dive into what <laughs> the stuff that I usually just nudge to the side, um, it it does open a lot. So it is quite a, an emotional experience and quite tiring. Um, so I'm I'm yeah a little bit more. Um, cautious about which projects I take on. Well, I can completely understand what you're talking about because I've had the same with photography and and also, you know, you get to that point where you then real when you realize what the problem is, then you can, yeah. um, you know, go in a new direction. So I completely understand what you're talking about. And yeah, you need to, that, that break is important. 
Yeah, I think so. I think it allows you to reevaluate. It allows you to go back and just you come back when when you do. Come, and I'm working on a project now, which is which is nice. Um, or I'm in the script writing part of the project, so just pulling the ideas together. And um, and I have some other stuff on top of that, which is is being discussed. Um, but you're coming at it, it's like almost a fresh perspective in, in the sense that yeah. you're it's like a clean slate, you, you sort of forget everything you've done and then you come back with something new. Um, and it's, it's and that, that's what I, I think I've always enjoyed about choreographing as well, is mm -hmm. that you, you can look through my repertoire. You would not think that each thing had been choreographed by the same person because it's, it's completely different styles because I'm a different person at each point in which I choreograph them. Um, and I think that's a sort of the the novelty of the position I'm in where I'm not doing it every day. It's not my day to day um, thing. It's something that I, I come to when I, when I feel like I have something that I want to do or say, and it's usually a different, very different point. The last time I made a piece. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I always believe that if you can see the, uh, the evolution in your work and, and you can see the change, then, you know, that's growth and that's amazing that you can do that. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I've only ever actually watched one, two of my pieces. Really? Yeah. 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 I don't really like watching. It's a bit of a... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. interesting, yeah. But, Ross, this was so great talking to you. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. And, um, yeah, it's it's wonderful. As I say, I support this project of yours Really, I think it's wonderful, and I hope you can go to South Africa soon. It's on the list, yeah, as you know. <laughs> as you know. <laughs> All right. Okay. Bye -bye.